So, uh, sir, today we will uh, look into one particular case, the automation of the sales order report. And uh, uh, besides this, we will also understand how to deploy the product and how to use the product. So after the demo, if you like it, then if you like the solution, then you can please give the email address for the free sample package. You can give a copy of any of the Excel sheets to be automated from Tally or any other ERP and give us any SQL code or Excel spreadsheet to be that is to be automated. So please do remember that uh, uh, this is for TurboFast. This is the module link. And this is going to be a download link for your sample package, which is here. And once you have it in the sample package, then uh, once you click upon this, then you will be led up to a particular site. This is your TCP file, and this is your finance integration module. Now the whole deployment process is what uh, will be shown, but you can actually see it from, um, from this particular video, which I'm going to be giving to you. All right, that will be part of the deployment package. And this is a two minutes video which shows exactly how you can do, deploy the entire thing. So it's all very easy and very, very simple. And uh, you know, uh, your deployment will take about just about two minutes. So uh, first of all, sir, in this particular case, uh, for this particular case study, we would look at what are the, what was the client problem which the client was actually looking at. So client actually needs a consolidated uh, sales order and billing report. Hello, Araf. How are you? Yes. So, client actually required a consolidated sales order with billing report by uh, by basically by codown, and the current status is that the report is being generated manually. Hello, Araf. Uh, my name is Apurva. So, we've just started the demo. And um, I will uh, just uh, show you exactly that uh, we have just seen from where you can download your sample package. So you can download it from this particular Google Drive link, which you must have got if you have, if you would have registered. And this is the blog link. And we're also giving a video uh, by which, you know, you can actually uh, do it in a very, very simple fashion. So this is the video which we will be giving to you. So it will show you exactly how to use this particular package, right? Now with here after then what Arav I'll do is I will I will I will um, what I will do is that I will now get down to uh, the entire modus of the uh, the demo so right uh, we are also recording it so so the client problem was the client needed a consolidated sales order report along with the billing by go down so the current status is that the report is being generated you know manually and the report generation requires at least one man day. So the tally reported with generated to TDL would used to take more than 20 minutes to refresh on a single day. So the client was looking at certain degree of automation, right? So what the client indicated to us was that the solution needs to be plug and play and the data extraction needed to be done in off-peak hours. So that means that the, the, the solution had to extract the data from the ERP system uh, when the, uh, you know, when, when there was, uh, when the when no activity was taking place, right? So it, it was being done in the night or it was during done during the lunch time. Then no, there should be no load on tally during the refresh of the report. So when these reports are being run or large number of reports are being run, then tally should not be impacted in any way. The client wants that there should be graphical representation of the dashboards. There should be no database. So the client wanted that there should be no database. So we actually had to convert all our data warehouse. So we have converted our entire data warehouse, which is on SQL onto what we call the DAX code, which is what Amrita would be actually showing it to you, right? <clears throat> and, uh, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and then the client desired to keep the solution on premises or, or the data should be linked up with the cloud and the client had a very low budget. So this was the restriction. For Arav, uh, for those of you who are conversant with Tally, uh, Arav, are you are you conversant with Tally? Because now you are the only person. So uh, you are a Tally partner or are you coming from a Power BI background, database background, or what is it exactly? Hello? Okay. So for those of you who are actually from the Tally background, uh, you must have seen the sales order report and you have this by part of party ledger name, right? By from this party ledger name and you have a bill receivable report by party ledger name. So basically the client wanted to merge these two reports. 
right? So uh, doing it in Excel was a very, very complex process, but uh, you know, uh, the client basically wanted to automate this entire thing, right? So just for those people who are not from the tally background, I just want to tell you that you have got a sales order and that sales order then links up with the delivery note, which is an inventory entry. So inventory entry basically means it does not impact your, uh, you know, profit and loss of balance sheet. And thereafter, you have got something called a sales invoice, right? Then after the sales invoice has been done, then you do a, what we call a receipt. That means I basically receive a certain payment. So sales invoice and receipt details are linked by what we call a bill ID. A delivery note and a sales invoice are linked by what we call a tracking number. And then sales order is linked up with delivery note or sales invoice. Now this whole sales invoice is actually based on a go down wise or a batch wise allocation or on an item wise allocation, right? So this is actually the structure of the tally. So you have a voucher, it, it goes into two branches, a voucher inventory, and you go to a voucher ledger. So there are custom functions which link these two branches. So this is how we have actually designed the solution. We are taking up tally or any other ERP with MS Excel, putting the data onto a JSON file, which is the extraction layer. The business logic has been coded in the DAX code, after which we have done normalization. And then a large number of star schemas or data marts or flat tables have been made in Power BI or DAX tables. And then you have made a reporting layer. So uh, this was an actually a referenceable project. So this is from one of the clients who's actually given a reference. So this product is actually now selling at, a, at quite a fast pace. And I come down to the next slide. So this is the reference letter from the client. Okay, so that's that's how the case is. Then our next come down to what is the value proposition which your customer gets? First of all, is so that many a times in order to make very complex reports, you make custom functions in tally. Second is understanding tally per se or it, uh, is, is very, very expensive. And consolidating Excel spreadsheets is, and within the tally data is very, very expensive. The third thing is that a lot of us are actually database developers. But we are, what we are doing is to remove database installs, the connectors, and the API. And any customs, functions, and procedures in SQL are being removed. What we are looking to reduce are the data extraction times, your aggregates and PDL and the SQL or uh, even in the Excel code. And the length of this Excel code and the TDL code required to make the report and the reporting data size is being narrowed, right? And the data refresh times for the reports has also been reduced. You're going to raise the ease of reporting, convenience to work with any of the BI tools. You'll be able to handle large data loads. The entire thing is point of click and the maximum number of concurrent users for the reports can be done. Now, another thing is, so what is the offering on hand actually here is, and where the costs come down, where the buy, uh, buy value, there's going to be lower coding time, there's going to be faster data access, easy to use desktop and server applications, and you will get uh, tally MIS, graphs, dashboards, and time season. So this is the benefit of using Excel to DAX. So this is the cheat sheet, which you will be using for converting Excel tally DDL feature, SQL to a DAX feature. And, uh, you know, in Excel, we use frequently use. So this, this demo was primarily for a lot for the chartered accountants. We use a lot of if then else. That will be replaced by join and lookup value. Lookup value will be again used by joins in the filters. Your sheets is going to be replaced by var. So SQL people will be conversant with CTEs. This is going to be var. And then sum if, which is sum and group by and SQL will be replaced by summarize and filters. Any questions up till now, Any anybody? Any questions? Okay. Now, a lot of the people are actually asking, what is the difference between Excel functions and DAX? So your Excel functions are all cell-based. So I put in a formula in a cell and then I stretch it down. But in DAX, what happens, it is column-based. In Excel, you have maximum flexibility. So since it's cell-based, I can have, I can design the report anyway, but DAX can be used for automation, data compression, and in designing role-level security reports. So what Turbo Data does is it helps you convert the Excel functions under Dash. DAX for those people who are looking to automate the spreadsheets and get the reporting in a faster, easier, and more convenient uh, way based on a role level security, right? This is the actually the benefit of using Power BI. It actually does massive data compression, a hundred page report. If it is compressed down to one page, I can read that uh, report very, very quickly. So this is what Power BI DAX does, and this is what we actually enable you to do. 
So uh, with this, actually, I'll uh, transfer it on to uh, uh, Miss uh, Miss uh, Miss uh, Miss uh, Miss Amrita, and she will actually uh, take it from uh, there, uh, and she will explain you the uh, remaining portions. Amrita. Yes. Uh, hello sir, my name is Amrita. I will explain you further processing of the, uh, this report. So basically the purpose of this report, it gives the complete visibility by the sales order for in sales invoice, delivery note and receipt and the GST paid. So it gives uh, sales order pendency details by the go down. And here there are some attached exemption of the report. Basically the sales order, sales invoice, credit note and delivery note are linked up with the same reference number here. So here the data has been taken from the voucher inventory table and code is uh, framed in SQL and Power BI both. But first of all, I will uh, tell you how to extract data from the tally uh, to conversion into the DEX code. So here uh, I go to the tally. Here uh, I have some TCP file and I will take it uh, only one from here. So here I have a TCP file like end of December. So I will take this uh, TCP file. Uh, here I will show you how to extract data from the uh, TCP to uh, JSN and import it into the Power BI. So copy that part and go to the uh, tally. And here are some uh, steps that I followed here. Like first of all, select one company. So here I am select only sam sample company data. Here I have two sample companies. I select only one company, sample two. Go to the configure, select product and features. Go to the um, manage local TDL option. So here uh, I have the option to select the path that I copied from that. So paste it here. So I select the end of December TCP file and press OK, then OK, yes. Uh, go to the back, so click on the quit, again quit. And go to the extract companies option. So it will extract all the company into the Excel format. So it will extracting after that, go to the Power BI, where you have your report will exist and go to the home tab and select the refresh button. Yes, after refreshing, it will select automatically all the data from the Excel form, from the Excel. Yes, it will refresh automatically. Yes, sir. So this is the process. Uh, I have the sales order report which is a go down voice report. So the, here the sales order, sales invoice, credit note and delivery note should be all linked up with the reference number. So I will show you the DEX code from here. So this is the DEX code for that. And I have also the stock movement by go down report. Here the opening balance for given stock items should be stored go down and batch wise. And the delivery note and the receipt note are linked up with the sales and purchase invoice through the tracking, uh, tracking number. In case one ha has entry both of delivery note and sales invoice, then the sales invoice number shall be taken from the purpose of valuation. And the voucher types that are exclude are the sales order, purchase order, delivery note, and receipt note common with the purchase invoice and the analysis by the time grant lead the, for the next step. So I have also the uh, ABC laser balance, payable and receivable snapshot also here. 
and the laser group view also here. This is the a single view by the laser history and group can be used to create balance sheet and the profit and loss statements. I have um, also the ba bank allocation details, laser balance, monthly profit report, monthly profit report here, the pick, uh, picking up the group entries related only with the revenue movement based on the year month analysis. I have quarter profit report also. This is the picking of the entry related only with the revenue movement based on the quarterly basis. This can be used for generating profit and loss statement also. I have more reports also, like receivable turnover, payable turnover, stock item batch analysis also. So after completion of this video, I give it to my sir, Mr. Apoor Chaturvedi. Yeah. So thank you so, so much. Uh, Amrita, I'll, uh, yeah, so if you can just uh, give, make me the host, I'll explain these reports a little bit more, right? Uh, yes, sir. And uh, this thing, and I'll explain it in more detail, right? Okay. So, sir, the first report that you're going to get is uh, we basically go through the schema here. And this is my ABC ledger analysis. So a lot of your companies would have be having that. How do you classify? So within your tally, you have got a ledger extract, right? And what is my ledger balance? So which are the which are the companies where there is maximum receivable? So this this particular view actually helps in analysis of the same. So you can simply pick it up and pick up your ABC categorization ledger name and by the percentage and the closing balance. And then based on the primary group, you can actually classify this. Up. Now, just to give you a brief example, this is the raw data which is coming out. So you're getting voucher types, you're getting voucher, voucher entry, you're getting stock item details, you're getting stock item batch inventory details, stock item batch details, and then stock group details. These are coming directly from Tally. So if you pick it up, uh, if you pick up your report, then you can pick up directly, uh, you know, you can make your reports directly from here. And you can pick up the details regarding stock groups, name one, parent, parent hierarchy and the primary group, right? So this is how it is. Now, the next portion that comes is that how do you get the ledger movement? That means at the voucher level, how do you get the ledger movement by the uh, uh, this thing? So this is actually being done by what we call the ledger sum movement. Now, a ledger is simply not the uh, complete set of granularity for analyzing the reports. I need to get, in order to get the historical analysis, I need to combine it with the group. So this ledger group view is the most important view which will be used for making your trial balance and can be further used for making customized profit and loss and balance sheet statements. So you can simply pick this up and in the ledger group view, you can get amount of credit, amount of debit, balance, company name, along with the cost center name. So a lot of set of feed, uh, feeds from the tally, tally uh, this thing has been extracted in order to uh, combine the ledger as well as the group. Now your ledger balance gives you the balance of the ledger as of the given fiscal date. Stock item per se is your item summary. That means your stock item, uh, closing stock details and the batch details as of a given date. Your group is based on your ledger group. Then you have a date dimension. Then you have a date dimension. Now let me just go down here and uh, you know just two or three things now voucher ledger bill is actually your voucher ledger and then the bill movement that means i want to know that for a particular voucher what was the ledger movement and what was the bill movement associated with it so here you pick this pick the pick the same up now if i move up up the hierarchy here if i move up the hierarchy years this is my stock item batch analysis so a number of your customers would be actually, uh, you know, analyzing the data based on the batch. So which are the most important batches in their scheme of things? Uh, these will be analyzed in this particular group. Now I will then come hereafter, then come back to some complex reports, which are part of the module. So one is the closing stock valuation based on the go down. Now the closing stock valuation based on the go down is, is, is a very, very critical report because a large number of companies have batches as well as the go down details for the stock item details. And they want, they get only the opening balance by batch and the go down uh, within the tally. So they want to get their closing stock 
uh, valuation based on the particular go down. So this report actually helps you calculate the closing uh, balance based on the particular go down and helps reduce the large number of spreadsheets. Then I next go down to consolidated ABC ledger, uh, which is got similar to what ABC categorization is. Then this is a standard date dimension, which is going to be used for your analysis, right? Now, this particular report gives you the inactive closing balances. That means it will help you find out those customers who have been inactive in your scheme of things for a period of time. So with each of these reports, we have done an ABC categorization. Now, hereafter, then what I will do is I will again go through these reports. So once this is the cost center sales report. So this actually gives you by the cost center name and the by the party name, the complete visibility of a sales order with its delivery notes, with the sales invoice numbers, and with the complete billing details, as well as the GST details. Then I look at the stock movement by go down. This is a very critical report and this is a very helpful report because by each go down, it's not by batch, but by each go down, by each stock item name, I'm getting an opening balance, the opening value, the total debit, the total debit quantity, the credit quantity, and the closing stock value and the closing balance. This is going to give me the ABC ledger balance. That means which are my ledgers, which are absolutely critical for me. And we have done an ABC classification of percentage. So if I click here, and if I go to this particular ABC ledger balances, then based on your ABC criteria in the given defined measure, then I can define, okay, fine, which will be classified as a, which can be classified. So you basically have to change these parameters. Then I come down to the payable and the receivable snapshot. So by each ledger, I want to know that for which particular company, what was my opening balance, how much is the payable and how much is the receivable based on each bill detail as well as the closing balance detail. This is very useful for those people who want to know their payment status as of the given fiscal date. A lot of companies have a lot of money which is stuck in the market. So you can get the complete details based on this payable and the receivable status. Then I next come down to the ledger group view. So this ledger group view will give you the complete company by cost center by group by group parent the legend the party ledger name the complete debit credit movement uh, based on the voucher type name and the balance for each given fiscal date extremely useful for those people who are looking to make dynamic trial balances or prof or profit and sheet so i need to know my trial balance right so because this total sum is zero so basically this zero this trial balance between the debit and the credit has to be matched before i can actually make an auditable profit and loss statement. This goes on to my bank allocation details. So bank allocation details is if you want to get an audit details for uh, you know various companies. This is the ledger balance report. So uh, you know suppose I want to I want to basically know that okay fine what are my to what is my total ledger balance as of this given date. I do not need to know the history. Then I'm going to get this from here. Then if I'm looking at monthly profit and loss statement. So now this does not include the inventory. This only includes the ledger movement details based on the year and the month, year and the month analysis. Then I look at the quarterly profit report. This only includes the year and the quarter wise uh, ledger balances movement report. Then the stock item batch analysis. Stock item batch analysis is basically going to give you that for a given batch name, for a bit of a go down, for each particular voucher type name, you know, what was the batch type movement of a particular stock item? And then the ABC classification based on the same. Profit and loss view, here it is across the entire tally history. What is the profit and loss snapshot uh, for us? Then I'm looking at the receivable turnover report. So I, in order to know whether my account is good or bad, I use what we call a receivable turnover analysis. That means sales divided by average receivable. So this has been used for uh, the, 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 the same. Same is the case with the payable turnover analysis. That means I want to know which particular, you know, where uh, I have more scope for uh, uh, taking credit. Then I look at the daybook view analysis. So I'm looking at voucher inventory, the voucher ledger sum and the voucher ledger bill details. This is a typical daybook view, uh, which you actually get it in uh, tally. And then I'm last, I'm looking at the pending sales order analysis. So a lot of companies have a bottleneck report of pending sales order, wherein which takes a lot of time from tally. So this report actually gives you the pending sales order analysis, right? So we have everything ready and Amrita has actually shown you how she extracts the data and loads the data. 
you can actually download the data straight away from here and put it onto your tally and uh, uh, you know uh, from here you can download the data and uh, put it onto your tally and extract the data from your machine now with this sir i open the um, open the uh, the uh, the presentation to various people to ask questions yes sir arif any questions Hello, hello, data decisions teams. Any questions? Hello, any questions? <laughs> 